you couldn't put past them to be future Ballon d'Or winners with the whole Mexican Ronaldo era kind of ending. Let's kind of discuss each of our top three young players that we've appreciated so far in this World Cup group stage. First, I'm going to go with Nuno Mendes, uh, left back for Portugal. Uh, he was pretty for... good in the, in the last game. He got injured, which is really, really annoying. Yeah, so he, him, I've just I've just seen the news, actually, him and Ben Wea are kind of like when you're watching Ashley Cole, really. When you, when you look at him, just solid, knows when to get forward, knows when to get down the flank, knows when to attack, when to defend. Always makes the right decision. I think he's still got that bit of rawness to him, which which you, which you need to have when you're at that age. But I think over time, the quality will start increasing. And obviously, out, outstanding kind of left back from from what I've seen. But as a youngster, I mean, his trajectory is insane. Kind of obviously playing with like these legends and stuff, playing Ronaldo, Bruno, and all these guys. So I think you know, it only just elevate him even more. Really, kind of getting to that kind of that level. Uh, but I think for him, the way that his trajectory is going to go, it's 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 absolutely insane. Before we carry on any further, we kind of know the obvious ones as well, which will give us honourable mentions because we mentioned them quite a lot. So I'm talking about the likes of Bellingham, Musiala, Pedri. We've spoken about them a lot. So we'll mention them at the end of the, our recording. So if anyone's listening and thinking, oh, how are you leaving these guys out? We're not leaving these guys out. We know about them because you know about them. So we're going to yeah. hype up some of the other ones as well. One of my ones is someone who I've been a big fan of since the start of last season, basically. I did a whole video series on some of the young African players coming out of the tournament so far as well. One of them's really come out to shine. His name is Mohamed Kudus. Um, yes. Ghana. <laughs> that first game was embarrassing. I hated that formation they played against Portugal because he was just nullified. He's one of the best attacking creative players. Um, yeah. He didn't get to drive the ball out properly from Portugal um, against Portugal, I should say, as well. But when you saw him against South Korea in his element as an attacking midfielder, sometimes linking up as a second striker, Ghana were a different team with Mohamed Kudus playing as, as the ball-playing attacking midfielder. And I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was someone where you're watching someone who's just like gliding across the football pitch and he was really enjoyable to really watch. And the goals that he scored as well, I, I was celebrating as a Ghanaian. I was, it's like the FIFA president is like, today I am black, today I am a woman. <laughs> that day I was Ghanaian. I was supporting Ghana for that as well. Incredible goal from him and an incredible tournament he's had so far as well. And I'm looking forward to watching them play against Uruguay. Obviously, at the time of recording, they haven't played yet. So I'm looking forward to seeing how Mohamed Kudus does as well. Um, but have you been able to watch him? Have you been able to watch Ghana as well? For any, anyone that's out there that kind of doesn't know who he is, just just YouTube uh, Mohamed Kudus versus Rangers away, Champions League this season. Uh, it just, yeah, just watching ball out. Honestly, insane, insane player, tidy. Kind of like that kind of CF, isn't he? That Aguero kind of centre forward. Low centre gravity. Peach of a left foot. Gets into the crevices of like the kind of gaps where the ball's going to land and kind of buries his chances. But yeah, honestly, solid player. Picks up the ball from kind of right in the middle of the park. Drives at players. It's pretty much what you want. But yeah, he was definitely on my list, to be fair. But I think I knew, I had a feeling you'd pick him to the, the one goal that he did against South Korea, the header. Just that kind of deft touch. And he's he's got it he's got it all really in terms of that package he's he's got that whole kind of centre forward play, and again he's another one that I think he's he's ready for his big money move now. So uh, hopefully, I mean, as a Tottenham fan, we can sign him. But uh, yeah, you're gonna have to break the bank for this kid. Yeah, Mohamed Kudu, shout out to you. You've been a, a joy and a revelation at this World Cup so far, and hopefully you get um, a lot more recognition as 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 the time goes on as well. Who's pick number two for you, Saki? You know who they are, and uh, and I think the two, and you you probably guessed it anyway. But I'll start with the one, Kamavinga. <laughs> Oh, wow. I think uh, when you when you look at the two that I'm going to pick, uh, it kind of gives it away. And I think he's just his left foot is just tidy enough. The way that he kind of positions the ball left to right, you get a kind of a bit of a Modric vibe. Not so much on the shooting aspect, but in terms of just positioning the press. The yeah, hitting the press, just knowing when to do it, when not to do it. So when you're watching the game today, the way that he was just picking up the ball, just driving it forward, trying to position the, that kind of V shape to to kind of push the fullbacks forward. I think he's uh, he's perfect at it. Yeah. He's got a vibe of Musa Dembele, Kamavinga does. Yes. I, I, I would like to say that out loud because I think he's been an enjoyable player to watch. And when you play, saw him play today um, against Tunisia, he's playing at left back. Yeah. He, killed <laughs> he, 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 could, he couldn't care less. He was coming in the field. He was getting involved in the play. Really enjoyable um, player to watch and big future ahead of him for as well. As you kind of know, being a Real Madrid player, I think he's going to be absolutely fantastic. And I'm looking forward to seeing um, how he does for him to kind of get to that kind of Musa Dembele kind of level, which I think he's already there anyway. The way that he plays, mm. kind of being one to one. If he was just to bulk up a bit more, and I think that will come with age. Once he starts bulking and he gets that size on him, what what a player he can be, man! Honestly, 
I'm going to go for, I'm going to say him, Cody Gapko. <laughs> what a joy. Um, Man United fans are getting gassed over him like he's already our player. I'm not going to do that because the last time he did that at the World Cup, um, Tony Cruz was that player. Ah, so okay. against, against Brazil. And then Louis van Gaal came in as manager and he pulled the plug on the deal and then he went to Real Madrid and then the rest is history. So I don't want to get happy too much about how Cody Gapko has done so far as well. But I mean, free games, free match, yeah, free matches, free goals. He can play anywhere across the front three. I think across the front four as well, normally for PSV from what I've seen so far as well. I think mm. Cody Gapko is special. He's one of those players that obviously it takes a lot to be the shining new light in the World Cup as well. And we've seen a lot of young players come through. So Cody Gapko for me, 23 years old, PSV player at the moment as well. He could go on to literally take on the world from what I've seen as well. Probably not for Man United. How much would you pay for Cody Gapko so far this season? I, I mean, he's got to, he's got to be in that kind of ballpark figure of what, 60, 70 million. But I think we kind of know where he's going to go. And I think uh, that United tax is going to come into fruition. And I think you'll end up paying about 80, 90 mil. If you've done that with Anthony, it'll probably be the same thing. And I think you guys are dead close, weren't you really? Just kind of just a fingernail away from getting him in the summer. Yeah. So it, definitely. It was... yeah. um, but uh, who's number three on your list of best young players that you've enjoyed at the World Cup so far? So you... I think you already know who it is. And I'll, I'll probably butcher the pronunciation, but Chuemi. Chuemi. Uh, sorry, yeah. So I told you I'd butcher it, but honestly, what... He just, butchers just, every midfield, man. He just butchers every midfield. He's incredible. He epitomises what a number eight should be. And I think for his age as well, and I, kind of when I was talking about Camavinga trying to get kind of bulking up, he already has that bulk to him and he can get up and down the pitch box to box. Honestly, what a quality player, for, especially for that at that young age. He's, again, when you look at that French uh, French team, he's kind of first name on the sheet, really. When you Obviously, the centre-backs always give him, right? So... When you look at the kind of like the centre middle the kind of park, you always have to put him in. Yeah, I think from what you've seen, man, I can't really. I mean, you can speak all day about this kid, honestly. But what a player, honestly, what a player. There's a future star for the French national side. There's a future star for Real Madrid. You can see yeah. why they got rid of Casemiro and why they brought Schumann in so far as well. He's going to win multiple leagues. He's going to win multiple Champions League. He hasn't really had a big midfield test so far as well. He nullified that Danish side as well. He didn't really get challenged today against Tunisia. And when I was watching him today, I was just like, this guy's just class. He's class. He doesn't just sit on his laurels. He works, works and works. And when you've got someone like Chumeni who works for your team, your midfield is already at like 50, 60% more confident with him in the pitch as well. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how he grows into one of these players. Because you see that at World Cups, don't you, Sophie? You see a World oh. Cup or two where you're like, this player's going to go far. And then a season or two later, they just drop off and you're like, you never hear from them again. So hopefully <laughs> he sticks to it at Real Madrid because Real Madrid, you do or you're dying. That's one of the biggest pressurised situations in world football as well. What I'm looking at this guy is I think he's just one of the best players that I've kind of watched so far in the Germany shirt. I'm going to talk about Jamal Musiala because we, we need to talk about how good this guy is. He's just unreal. We can talk about the way Musiala makes you feel as a fan when you're watching him, when you're mm. enjoying him on the pitch, when you're actually seeing how he dribbles, gets past players, the technical ability he has as a footballer at his age as well. Like, people don't do that when they're 35, when they're 25, let alone when they're 19 years old at a World Cup. I think he's something special. I think he's one of the most special talents that we've seen coming out of Germany for a long, long time. And we saw around 12 years ago, they had the likes of Ozil coming through, Tony Cruz coming through as well. Uh, Mario Goetz are coming through at the same time. They all came through 2014. They end up winning the World Cup, which was fantastic. Musiala will be the guy that will spearhead this new generation of German football. I can say that with my hand on my heart, saying it with full chest. And when you're looking at him as well, only Musiala is going to ruin Musiala's development, literally. I don't think there's anyone else that can ruin it. There's no team that can ruin it. He's at the best club at Bayern Munich in Germany. Still 19 years old. He can play across the front three, which is incredible. He can play as a false nine like he did against them, uh, against Spain as well. But He's honestly one of the most enjoyable German players I've seen for a long, long time. And I'm really happy that we get to watch him at a World Cup. But it's really going to be difficult for him um, in this kind of pragmatic German side as well, don't you think, Suki? Especially from what we saw against Spain as well. When you, when you look at him, and I think from here from academy level, when he was playing at Chelsea at 16, 17, he was playing with the, the reserves team. So kind of speaks volumes to his kind of that maturity that he's already got. And the way that he plays, you see there against Spain, the way he can beat a man, the way he fills in the kind of, again, those kind of gaps, picks up the ball, knows when to kind of pick the right pass, when to drive, when to shoot. I think shooting, obviously, is just, just a bit sketchy yet, but I think he'll, he'll get there. But again, when you when you talk about these players, and I think 
from from my list and your list, they they all play for top teams. So you've got like Ajax development team, brilliant. You've got Bayern Munich, very systematic, the way that they kind of have that German approach to things. And obviously you've got the two French players that play for Real Madrid. So there's that kind of expectation and that kind of level that they, they have to achieve. And I think with these kind of youngsters being in that kind of mode and that environment, th- th- there's nothing that's really going to stop them. It's again, like the world's your oyster. So from looking at it, a future future German captain. But I think again, like you say, that, that kind of German team, it's at, it's at the kind of end of its fruition now. So I think it's ready to to make that transition. And I think a new coach that comes in now after Hansi Flick, that's when we can start seeing some more youngsters coming into kind of the, the next World Cup. I wouldn't say the Euros just yet, but the next World Cup in 2026, then we can start seeing a proper full-fledged young German team, kind of similar to the way that Spain have been set up, having that kind of that kind of built built team. And I think that's what they're, they're lacking at the moment. They just need to get some some more youngsters in, kind of from especially from like a defensive point and some centre midfielders as well. And I think uh, from there, they can obviously kind of build up from there but I think he's going to be the like you say the, the, the kind of build around that approach a bit like KDB you just build around that kind of player uh, but again like you say from what you said he's just yeah he's insane absolute baller yeah it's absolutely fantastic to watch it's just been a joy to watch really as well so when you're actually watching some of these players you couldn't put past them to be future Ballon d'Or winners with the whole Mexican Ronaldo era kind of ending um, True. You, could, you couldn't put it past them as, as, as well which is crazy <laughs>